In this video, we'll use the Cornerstone Wall Designer software to create a profile of a retaining wall. After we set up the units, reinforcement, and soil conditions, we can design a wall on the Stations tab. Stations are points along the wall, noting the length from that point to the beginning point. Note that this beginning point, or zero station, would be the left end of the wall, as if you were in front of the retaining wall looking towards the face of the wall. From this view, the end station would then be the right end of the wall. Rather than inputting the exposed height of the wall, we'll input the top and bottom elevations, or the elevation of the ground behind and in front of the wall. So we have this example grading plan with the TW or top of wall and BW or bottom of wall for the starting station. Now that our first point is set, we can press down or click add for our next point. We'll go to the grading plan, measure the distance from our zero station, and add the change station on the software. We can then add the top and bottom of wall elevations. The stations are cumulative, so we measure the change from the beginning for the next point. Sometimes, like at this point, only the top or bottom of wall elevations are shown or known. We can leave the top elevation blank here, and the software will interpolate the data later on if we hit the validate button. After doing the same for all the points, we now have all the stations and elevations needed for a wall. Like I said, if we hit validate, the missing data will be interpolated from the adjacent points. Before moving on, we have options to press crest geometry for a wall backslope or toe geometry if there's a toe slope in front of the wall. We can either input this as a known elevation or a general slope angle above or below the wall. For example, if we have an elevation this far from the wall, we can input the ele elevation and offset from the wall. Or if we know that the slope is 2 to 1, we can input 26.6 degrees as a slope with this slope distance. This is the same for the toe slope. Like I showed for the cross section analysis, we also have the option to input the back slope in the loading conditions tab. Since the slope is fairly consistent throughout this portion of the wall, it may be easier to input there so we don't have to input it for each point here. Next, we'll go to the Panels tab, which turns all the sections of the wall where there is a difference in height into panels. If we want to make the top or bottom steps more or less gradual, we can add blocks at the top or bottom. Another feature here is adding markers to the wall. This is helpful if there are any curves, corners, or other features along your wall. If we look at our grading plan, we have an inside corner. We can get the station and add it. Click New, add the station, and give it a name. Although this is an inside corner, the corner section box should only be checked for outside corners. This option is given so that end corner blocks can be tallied up for this point in the materials summary. So we'll save and close that. Moving on, we'll go to the Loading Conditions tab and input our back slope as we stated. The back slope ends around this panel, so we'll add the slope, average offset, and then hit Extend Left, so all the panels up to that point have the applied slope. On the grading plan, we'll see that instead of a slope behind the wall, we have a parking area here, so we can include a live load. It's about 5 feet away, so we'll input 150 pounds per square foot and that distance. We can either extend right, or we can also go to the next panel, right click, and choose copy from left. Now that this is set, we can go to the design tab and hit generate all. Each panel is designed with a cross section showing the different strengths and lengths of geogrid between each block. Similar to the cross section analysis, we can adjust the grid lengths here for each panel. To avoid having different grid lengths for each panel and ease of construction, we can input a grid group increment and also choose Auto Grid Group. This shows where the geogrid lengths differ. One great feature for this software is you can copy a wall so that the next wall has the same parameters. You can even copy it with the same stations. So if we wanted to compare this wall with a gravity wall, we can copy it with stations, go to the Wall Unit tab on this new wall, Select Multi-Depth Set and choose Gravity with Extenders. Now go through the Panels and Loading Condition tabs again 
and hit Generate All under the Design tab. You can see a cross-section is made for each panel as a gravity wall. Now that we've created profiles, we can get the calculations used to create each cross-section and get quantity takeoffs for the walls, which I'll show in the next video.